our services here at Timberlake Baptist Church this morning. We're glad you're with us. Let's all get a hymn book set. Turn to page number 413. And we'll do like the song says, stand up, stand up for Jesus.
is married. Okay. Don't forget your what you hide in your face for, girl. Oh. <laughs> Did she embarrass you? <laughs> Oh, okay. All right, that's all right. Keep it in the family. <laughs> Don't forget, we got plenty of tracks out there, and I bought us some more. So y'all got to get busy to the Lord because he's coming soon. Amen. Remember, hell's hot. Lord's coming, ready or not. And the missionary for this week is Mike and Sue Cook. Pray for them. Pray for all of them. They need our help. We need as many as we can go that uh, can to go with us. Right? Okay. That's all I got. Thank you, Brother Bill. Good morning, everyone. This is great to be in the Lord's house. Amen? All right. If you got your bulletins, go ahead and get those out. Go over a few announcements and upcoming events we have in here at the church. I'm going to start off with our precept for this week. It comes from Ezekiel chapter 16, 50, verse 8. Let's all say it together this time. And they were haughty. Looking forward to uh, the preacher's message this morning about that. <clears throat> As we open it up, we see uh, Hens Lloyd uh, will be presenting We Believe Tonight. We'll have to postpone um, yours. We just ask you at this time to please keep the family of Bobby Rutherford in your prayers. Um, <clears throat> graduation Sunday will be May 30th at 11 a.m. Uh, it will be high school, college, and Believer's Bible Institute. Uh, and Brother Earl Clarkson will be preaching that night. And we have a uh, table back there in the foyer uh, for cards because uh, uh, for our uh, teens. And they will be having a Taco Tuesday graduation party June 1st, at 2021. That will be at 6 to 8 p.m. at Emily Baptist Church, honoring our teens back there. Also, Tuesday Bible study is canceled this week at 11. <coughs> And right around the corner, we'll be having Mercy as well with us on our homecoming day, Sunday, June the 6th, 10 a.m. through 11 a.m. And we have many more upcoming events, so let's be in much prayer for everything we got going on here at the church. Also, let's look at our prayer on the back of our bulletin for this week. It says, Dear Lord, Lord, please help me to be humble like Jesus so that the Holy Spirit of God can control my life. Keep me aware at all times that I need you to handle every situation in my life. Help me love people the way you did so they might see your mercy and grace in me and want to come to know you as personal Savior. In Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen. That should be our prayer for upcoming weeks to come. Amen. All right, before we go to our prayer list, uh, we're going to go ahead to our offering time. Uh, we got our white envelopes in front of us, tithes, 10 percent, so it belongs to God, and offering because you love him. He's been too good to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember our brown envelopes for our, brown, uh, for, our building inf uh, uh, for our building fund. Let's be sure to give weekly on that. And if you don't have cash or card, I mean cash or check, we have a card machine back there with Brother Ken. And as you're leaving today, go ahead and place your offering in the back in the box right there as well. And if you're listening by way of Internet, if you'd like to give at our, our website, you can click our secure link and give there. And also by way of mail, uh, P.O. Box 10004, Danville, Virginia, 24543. <clears throat> I'm going to pray and ask the Lord to meet with us and uh, pray over our prayer list. And when I'm done, Miss Diane Mills is going to be singing our special this morning. So let's pray at this time. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day you gave us, Lord. Thank you for our many blessings. Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your only Son, Jesus, down across for our sins. We're so thankful for that, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for another opportunity just to be in your house, Lord. We just thank you for the blessings we already had this morning. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to let them overflow here at, at Timberlake, Lord. Lord, we just pray you please be with every heart in attendance, Lord. I pray you just speak to each and every single one of us. Lord, I just pray you just answer all our needs according to your precious and holy will. Lord, we ask you to be with the preacher. Bless him as he preaches. Be with Diane as she sings. Lord, I just pray that your will be done in this service today, Lord. Lord, I just pray you please be with some people who are in need of our special prayers this morning, Lord. We ask you to please be with Wayne Hodges, Lord, has a procedure Tuesday. I uh, ask you to please touch him and bless him in a mighty way. I pray that you just please be with the family of Bob, Bobby Rutherford. I pray you just comfort him during this uh, tough time and trying times, Lord. And Lord, I just pray you just uh, comfort him with your love, mercy, and grace, Lord, and just give him the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we ask you to please be with Ruby McKee, has an infection. Touch her and bless her in a mighty way. Be with Carol Tickle and arthritis. pray you just uh, help her with that. Please continue to be with Vicki Reed and bless her in her back. <clears throat> bless her in a mighty way. Lord, we ask you to please be a family of my heart. Bless them and comfort them, Lord, and I pray in Jesus' name. 
Lord, please be with the pastor. Uh, has a procedure Tuesday. Pray you just bless that and help everything to go smoothly, Lord. Lord, pray you please be with Angie and Angel as they'll be traveling traveling soon, Lord. And please be with uh, Glenn and Slayton, Lord, and just pray you just bless his needs as well. Lord, we just ask you just to show up in a mighty way, Lord, and just bless the offering and let it get the further your kingdom. And I just pray if anybody <clears throat> that's listening to the service, Lord, here or online, I pray if they are lost and do not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray today be the day of their salvation. Lord, we just pray you just bless every person in your house, and we love you and thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 16. Ezekiel, chapter number 16. We're talking about history repeating itself. And that is certainly true when it comes to the coming of Christ. The things we've been looking at happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. They happened in the nation of Israel. They happened in the Roman Empire. And they're happening in America today. Talked about the fact of arrogancy. In chapter 16, verse 49a, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Then gluttony, fullness of bread. Then inactivity, an abundance of idleness was in her. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. We shouldn't be idle. We shouldn't have a lot of free time. We ought to have our li lives planned to serve the Lord and live for God and invest our days as best we can. Last week we talked about the greedy in verse number 49D. And in her daughters neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Boy, we live in a greedy nation today. Everybody thinks about themselves and nobody else. Now this morning I want to talk about a subject we very seldom hear anything preached about, but it's true. It's in our world we're living in today, it's in America, and I'm afraid to say it's in some of our lives. Verse 50a, haughty. And they were haughty. Haughtiness is pride on steroids. That's what haughtiness is. You got that, Esther? And you didn't know what haughtiness was this morning. I told him to tell him during preaching hour. Haughtiness is pride on steroids. Haughtiness is pride in public and on parade. In other words, you're not ashamed of your pride. Who else is not ashamed of his pride? The devil. Haughtiness is the result of pride that is spread in our life like a cancer, overtaking and overrunning us, and in the end, it will destroy us. Haughtiness will destroy a person. It's going to destroy the devil. One day he's going to hell for all of eternity, and all God's people said, Amen. There's no shame of a haughty person. They have no shame. They're not ashamed of their selfishness, their self-centeredness. As I said, this is happening in our country today, in our cities. We've forgotten the principles of God and we've replaced them with our own ways, our own wants, our own wishes, and our own will. We have a problem in America today. God is not at all recognized anymore, anywhere. We should have knew when they wanted to take God out of the classrooms and prayers out of the classroom, the Ten Commandments out of the classroom. We should have knew where we were headed, but we sit back and just didn't pay any attention and let it happen. Now they want to take in God we trust off of our coinage. It's against the, going to be against the law before long to preach the Bible. You watch what I'm telling you. They can preach their hellish wickedness, but we can't say what God says is true. If we don't stand up, we're going to get run over. That's a fact. And it's the haughty people in America who are causing all this. No respect for God, no love for his word. They want to erase God from our world. The word haughty in Hebrew is the word gobo. It means to soar, fly high. To be lofty, sounds like Washington, D.C. To be haughty, to exalt, to lift up oneself, to mount up, to be proud to raise up great height upward. In other words, it's lifting yourself up higher than even God Almighty. When I think about Hardy, I think of Whoopi Goldberg. I think of Joey Behar. Ellen DeGeneres. I mean Ellen DeGeneres. That's who I think about when I think about Hardy. They are smarter than Almighty God. They know more than the Bible knows. When they really don't know anything. Amen. They have pride in their mind and in their heart. They have weird thoughts in their head because there's no principles of the Word of God. Haughtiness is a sin that takes the glory uh, and the spotlight off of God and puts it on man. 
That's what the world's doing today. It's all humanism. Have you seen the latest commercial on, on not wasting clothes? Have you all seen that? Am I the only one who saw that commercial? Okay, you need to go home and watch it. It's a humanistic commercial. They're telling you to uh, make better clothes so we don't have to buy them so often. If we don't have to buy a lot of clothes, we can save a lot of money. You know, all this ridiculousness. Let me tell you something. As long as there's a lady in this world, there's going to be closets full of clothes. <laughs> it's just going to be that way. And shoes and pocketbooks. Both. I go in, I pull something out of my closet and 50 pocketbooks walk me upside the head before I get out of there. I wouldn't mind it if there was money in them. But there ain't no money in them because they took the money to buy the pocketbooks. Say amen. That's, that's where it went. What they ought to be saying is turn to God, not worry about buying clothes. It's humanistic. See, humanism's in a lot more forms than just what we think. It's making people think about human things instead of godly things. You know, we need to get the message of the gospel out that man is lost and that Jesus can save you and change your life and give you a new beginning. It's saying, look at my wisdom. Hear my wisdom. It's unmatched. I have an intellect that's unmatched. Well, we taught it in Sunday school this morning. I'll say it again this morning. God already knows everything. And listen, I can't remember half of what I learned 30 years ago. I can't even remember what I ate yesterday. This crazy doctor's got me writing down everything I eat. <laughs> got to date it. Three meals a day. What your blood sugar is before the day starts. I get stuck when I get up, and I get stuck when I go to bed. Y'all are dead crowd. Y'all need to go sugar to doctor one another to know what I'm talking about. I mean, today, you, I got to tell him everything. What I eat. What my blood sugar is, I don't care. <laughs> but he does. So I better listen to him. Say amen or me. You see, he used to ask me, are you taking your blood sugar? Uh, 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 uh. Well, um, no. But this last time my blood sugar was 400, he said, you're going to know from now on. He meant what he said. He said what he meant. And Wendy sticks me to take my blood sugar in the morning and she gives me that needle at night. And of course my blood sugar's done this. It's gone down, 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 down to 194. I ain't eaten nothing since last night. It better be less than 194 today. I'm going to say something ugly. <laughs> hmm? You see, God knows everything. Doctor didn't know everything, but now he's going to know everything because I had to write it down. But his real point in making me write it down is not so he can know it. See, he's smarter than I am. Quit pointing at me up back yonder. Wes, I'm praying for you married to her. She's pointing that pen at me. So you know, so you know, yeah. So I'll know. So I'll pay attention to what I'm eating. So now I think about it before I eat something I ain't got no business because I got to write it down. <laughs> you say, preacher, you ain't going to write it down. You ain't going to tell him. I might as well because God knows. Amen. And the blood sugar ain't going to lie. Because he's going to take that blood out of my arm and analyze it. See, I can't get away with nothing. I got news for you. We can't get away with nothing with God either. You can go ahead and be pride-filled and haughty if you want to. You can act like you're more than you really are. But you can't fool God. You fool man. We're easy to fool. Because we don't know it all. Like I say, we can't even hardly remember what we did yesterday. But God knows it all. Amen? Pride is thinking highly of ourselves personally. But haughtiness is pushing that belief in the face of others by promoting ourselves. That's a different ballgame. When you go from pride to haughty, you're pushing it in people's faces. You're saying, look at me. Look at the front of your bulletin. See all four of them guys pointing at themselves? I mean, they, they think they something. They think they're a bag of tater chips and all that, and they ain't even crumbs. But they think they're something. They're haughty. They're haughty. You can almost call haughtiness living the religion of pride in the public eye. Look at me. 
haughtiness is wanting everybody to look at you, listen to you, follow you. That's what the devil does. Amen? So if you catch yourself wanting to be in the lead and want people to follow you and listen to you, you better watch out. You may not be following Jesus. Because we're supposed to be pointing people to who? Christ. We're supposed to be pointing people to the Lord. When we was a kid, we used to call them glory hogs. Glory hogs. Spotlight Christians. I want everybody to look at them. Folks, taking all the accolades and the glory for ourselves and never allowing it to be pointed to the rightful recipient, which is God Almighty, makes us a profitless Christian. We accomplish nothing. If you really want to accomplish something for God as a Christian, you've got to put the spotlight on Him. You've got to give Him all the glory. You cannot be haughty. You cannot be pride-filled. Galatians 6, 14, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. We ought to get up every morning saying, Who can I tell about Jesus today? Who can I tell about the Lord today? Who can I share the gospel with? Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before what? And a haughty spirit before a what? A fall. Better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. In other words, if you're going to rob God of his glory, you better watch out because he's going to expect you to give it back to him one day. You can, have, you can steal his glory now. But at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to answer for that. And you're going to answer for it in tears. I hear people say all the time, when I go to heaven, I'm going to ask God why. No, you're not. You're going to fall on your face before God in humility. I'm not going to ask God why. A fall is a sign of something that's wrong, warning you of impending danger. I had a senior adult many years ago. Her name was Mildred Smoot. I picked her up every day. I mean, every church service took her to church. She lives just a few houses above me. And I'd pick up Mildred, take her to church. But Mildred got <clears throat> in such bad shape they had to put her in a nursing home. And she would walk around the circle at the nursing home every day just to get some exercise. Mildred loved to. She never walked. She'd run everywhere. She went, bless her heart. She's kind of like Wendy. You'll never see Wendy walk. She's running everywhere she goes. And Mildred would walk every day, run every day, whatever you want to call it. One day she fell. Blacked her eye, tore her face up really bad. I went to see her, and she looked terrible. Looked like somebody beat her in a prize fight. I said, Mildred, you're going to be all right? She says, yeah, I was just walking and just fell. Just don't know why, I just fell. I said, well, be careful if you go walking again. She said, I will, preacher. Two weeks later, they called me. She's out walking. But this time she had a massive heart attack and died. You see, the first fall was heart attack. They just didn't find it. It was a warning sign that something worse was coming. And she died of a massive heart attack. See, that fall was a warning. Folks, sometimes God causes us to fall as a warning. It's a warning trying to tell us, look to me. Point to me. Live for me. Don't serve yourself. Don't be haughty. Don't think you're something you're not. Let me share several thoughts with you. First of all, a righteousness. Look at 2 Samuel 22, 25. Therefore the Lord hath recompensed who? You better take this personal today. Don't think about the one sitting beside you or around you or near you or somebody that should be here. You need to think about you. And the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness. If we're in faith and obedience to the Lord, we will never be haughty because our faith and our trust is totally in Him. You can't be haughty if you're trusting God. Because you know you can't trust yourself. Now look, I don't even go in the closet at the house where the food's at. Because I don't trust myself. 
I know better. I know there's cans of Chef Boyard at D in there with a pop -a top <laughs> Now, years ago, you had to get the can opener out. And in our house, if you got the can opener out, the cat come running. The cat thought you was going to feed it some cat food, and it come running. And if you opened something, with the cat, everybody in the house knew you had that can opener because they could hear it running. Now you slip off in the back with that pop -a top I say, preacher, how do you know? Sometimes you can preach from spoons. <laughs> See, I got spoons hid in my office, plastic spoons. You know what to do with a plastic spoon, don't you? You throw it away, bless God. And say, I don't even go in there because I know if I go in there, I'm going to come out with a can of beefaroni. I love them meatballs with the extra large meatballs. Y'all seen them cans they got now with supersized meatballs? Lord have mercy. Make a hog holler. So I don't even go in that room because I don't trust myself. I know better. I've even taught Winnie to cook so I don't have to go in the kitchen. She swears it's another reason for it, but no, it's so I won't cook and eat it all. Yesterday I was cutting up some watermelon cantaloupe to take to Cindy. Some of it didn't get there. You've got to taste to make sure it's good. You don't want to give somebody a bad watermelon. Say amen. You don't want to give them a bad cantaloupe. But anyway, I can't trust myself. And you shouldn't trust yourself either. Because we'll do ugly in the drop of a hat if we think ain't nobody looking. But then I have to remind myself, God is always looking. Now I want to go and start fasting and praying. Say amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, listen, if our faith is in God, we, we won't be haughty because we're trusting in Him. Our dependence and devotion we are set totally in and of Him. We're depending on Him to get us where we go and to do what we need to do. God knows the cleanness not only of the outside of our cup, but He knows the inside. Not only the public, but God knows the private. This morning we all look nice on the outside. I'm amazed at how many people come in here, these couples dress like each other. <laughs> I, I, it amazes me. You look back there at Brother and Sister Podobinski. Both of them in yellow today. I have no problem knowing where they're at. Amen. I can see them loud and clear. They're dressed together. Hey, folks, we can see the outside, but we can't see the inside. But God can. But you know what? I got news for all of us. People know our inside from how we act on the outside. If we're haughty, they know God's not in control. If we're humble, they know God's in control. You see, because we know we're dependent on Him. We don't get agitated so quickly. We don't get aggravated so quickly. Because we trust God to be taken care of us. Now, it's guaranteed if we're walking in His righteousness, in faith of Him, that we'll be blessed in our deeds because His righteousness is is his righteousness and not ours. I've done things that didn't work out. Y'all ever done things that didn't work out? During this time of year, strawberries is everywhere. And I love, we used to make strawberry pies just like they did at Shoney's. I can't have those no more because the doctors make me write down everything I eat. So I decided I'm going to make mine sugar-free. So I got the little old lady on the Internet, and she walked me through how to make a strawberry pie. And I took where it said sugar, and I put Splenda. Let me make something real clear to you. Splenda is not sugar. <laughs> it's just a cheap way to get us folks in trouble through so we don't kill ourselves. Don't go home and follow that woman's recipe and replace sugar with Splenda because it's nasty. <laughs> they look good. That thing had strawberries in there that big because I bought them that big. And that, I mean, I had that glaze poured over that stuff smelt good in the pot and rolled it all over them strawberries. I said, I'm going to have me a piece of strawberry pie that's going to be legal. I can write it down and justify it. Trust me. As soon as it went in my mouth, it went out my mouth. And I 
said, that ain't ruby strawberry pie at all. It is nasty. It looked good. It smelled good. But it didn't taste good. You may look good today. You may even smell good today. But what, is, what are you really like on the inside? That's the question today. If you trust in God, your life's going to be blessed. Your life's going to be blessed. God's going to take care of you. Number B, A is righteousness. B is cleanness. According to my cleanness in his eyesight. This is not righteousness in the assessing eyes and the philosophy of men, but that of God's just eye and God's just opinion. Have you ever had anybody misjudge you? Misjudge your motives? Said you did what you did for another reason other than what you really did? They don't know what you do, what you do for. They misjudged you. But you got two options there. You can blow up at them and have a fight with them. Or you can leave it alone and let God handle it. Now, which one do you think you ought to do? Y'all ain't going to answer, are you? Y'all leave it alone and let God handle it. Because God's going to take care of you because you're doing things right His way. Say amen. Don't start a fight just because you've got to be right. Don't start a fight just because you've been wrong. God will always make sure the truth comes out. Say amen. He's a God who's fair and just to all men, for he's not a respecter of persons. God knows the cleanness not only from the outside, but the inside, not only the public, but God knows the cleanness of the private. So it pays for me and you to live right in public and in private. It pays. It pays to be humble and trust God. We can't hide anything from God. God knows what's clean and pure, and his assessment will always be just. People may not do you right, but God will always do you right. The devil makes sure, makes, makes sure it's delayed so he'll try to test your faith to see if you're going to wait on God. Just wait on God. It's going to turn out right. God's going to make things right because he blesses those who are just and follow his righteousness and have faith in him. Say amen. If we endeavor to keep our lives clean and pure for him, we can be assured that he will not overlook our devotion or our dedication. Don't ever give up on God. He's watching. God's keeping record. God's going to bless what you do. Stay faithful to him. Walk in his righteousness. Live in his cleanness. Now see, fairness. 2 Samuel twenty two twenty six, And with the merciful, thou wilt show thyself, what's that word? And with the upright man, thou shalt sow thyself upright. And with the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the forward, that's not forward, that's forward, that's wickedness. That means to be ugly, sinful. And with the forward, thou wilt show thyself unsavory. And the afflicted people, thou wilt what? That's where I'm at. Say amen. I like being saved, don't you? I like being rescued. I like being taken care of. It's clear as what the Bible says. We reap exactly what we sow here in our lives. If we give mercy, that's doing people the way they ought to be done, not like they deserve. There's a lot of people who deserve to be treated bad, but it's not our place to do it. God has to do that. So give people mercy. If they cuss you, tell them have a nice day. I learned that one. They cuss you, you just say, have a nice day. Don't you, don't you be ugly back. Doesn't pay. Doesn't pay. Be merciful. If we stand upright, listen to me. If we stand upright, God will stand with us. Just stand upright. God will stand with you. And if we're pure in our life's manner of living, God will be pure to us in his presence, power, and production. If you're pure, he's right with you. And he's going to empower you. And he's going to bless you. And he's going to make your life do more than you could ever do by yourself. So it pays to be pure. We don't be pure to walk around and say, look how pure I am. That's not the reason for it. We walk around living right so God can see our purity and bless us so other people can be saved and other lives can be changed and other people can be blessed. It's not about me and you. Say amen. amen. That's fairness. Fairness is you give your life to Christ, now let him use it. Don't you keep that part of it for yourself. Don't you be selfish. On Sunday night, Wednesday night, you ought to be in church. The offering box is back there. Don't you walk by and wish it well. 
put your tithe in that box. Say amen. amen. And your building fund. We're going to soon be $125,000 in debt. Say amen. Not in debt, but we're going to have to pay it. Sure would be nice to get taken care of before it gets here. Say amen. Some of y'all smiling. Some of you frowning. I'm going to pray for y'all that frown and I'm worried about y'all. But folks, we, we, if, if we'll just do right, he'll stand with us. We'll just be pure. He'll bless everything we do. I got a letter this morning. Opened it up. I hadn't been to mail for two or three days. And it said to the trustees of Timberlake Baptist Church. I said, well, well maybe this is a million dollar check. Glory to God, let me open this thing fast. It wasn't. You see these signs around town says, we buy ugly houses. <laughs> Some of y'all don't go around town, I don't guess. Anyway, he says, we'd like to buy your 56 acres of property. I said, what in the world is this? I said, I got interested then. I looked down the bottom and it says, our offer is. Now, folks, we paid $350,000. We paid $26,000 for the trailer, $125,000 for this two acres. You know what that scandal offered me? And offered you? It said, they'd buy all our land for $42,000. In the garbage can it went. Say amen or oh me. See, that man don't know what we plan on doing out there. Say amen. Money is not our object. Money is not our goal. Souls are our goal. Say amen. We're just pure. And we do what's right. And we walk with God. He'll take care of us. Amen. He'll see us through. He's fair. We reap what we sow later than we sow and more than we sow. So we had better be sure we're sowing good things. Amen? Fairness. If we sow good things, he's going to be fair. Righteousness, cleanness, fairness, the haughtiness. Look at 2 Samuel 22, 28. But thine eyes are upon the who? The haughty. That thou mayest bring them down. It's no doubt that God is against and will never bless the arrogant, haughty person. God himself promises that they will not only crow and cackle, but so long without him dealing with them. The sad thing is, haughty people don't last long. Haughty people don't live long. Why? Because their haughtiness brings them down. When they fall, if they look to God, he'll lift them up. But if they won't look to God, ultimately their fall will kill them. I had a friend of mine that I loved more than life itself. He and I were buddies even before I got married. He was quite a bit older than I was. He'd been in World War II, the Battle of the Bulge. He saw many of his friends die at the Battle of the Bulge. And sometimes he came home and he had a hard time dealing with life when he was by himself. And when he was by himself, He'd go to drinking because those memories would come back to his mind. So we tried to keep him as busy as we could, but there was no way in the world we could keep one human busy all the time. It's not possible. I won't go to the story, but time after time, he'd get drunk and get in trouble. He'd done give his girlfriend a wedding diamond, was going to marry, had been a 60-year-old bachelor. He was going to get married, give her a diamond. I don't know what happened, but he got drunk, wrecked his car, Got married in the first of October, went to jail two weeks later for three months. He got in trouble. You reap what you sow. Time after time, I won't go into all the story. He kept getting drunk and getting in trouble. Getting in trouble, drunk and getting in trouble. He lost everything he had. Then one night, New Year's Eve, got with his brothers and got drunk. This time he fell down a set of steps and broke his neck. And he died. God done warned him over and over and over. He'd fell time and time again. God gave him chance after chance after chance. But sooner or later, if you don't make things right with God, your sin will find you out. And it'll not only find you out, but it'll kill you. It'll destroy you. I'm here to tell you Hardness will bring you down. You say, well, why, what's that got to do with hardness? When you think what God says is wrong is right, you're haughty. Boy, where the amens go on that? When you think
think your sin is all right and God has said it's wrong, you're haughty because you're saying you know more than God knows. And we all know we don't. It'll be God that brings the haughty person down and it'll be obvious that God did it. It is not our place to judge or pass sins on anyone. God's able to handle his job just fine and we must trust him to do it. Say amen. He'll not over or under judge a person or a situation. He will do it in a way that will bring that person back to him and give God the glory. We've got to give God that chance by praying. Amen? But if we don't, we're going to do any darkness. Look at 2 Samuel 22, 29. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my what? Darkness. For by thee have I run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. Thank God when we're following him, we can see where we're going. Aren't you glad of that? Where the Lord is, there can be no darkness at all. The people of God are not blind if we're near him. He's the sun, the S-U-N of our day. If he's the sun of our day, we'll never walk in darkness. We'll always know where we're going. 1 John 1, 4. And all these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. I want to be as close to him as I can be. How about you? I don't like the darkness. The other night, I fell asleep in my chair. Any of y'all ever do that? Wendy, she'd been gone to bed and cut all the lights out. I had to get up out of my chair, walk all the way to the other end of the house. And I was holding on to things as I was going along because after you wake up, you're kind of droggy. Say amen. So I got to my office, and in my pride, I said, I don't need that light. I know where I'm at. I know where everything is in this office. I can make it without the light. I forgot there was a set of scales in my office. I ain't talking. See, I, I can't use skinny mini scales. You know, them little things lay on the floor that bed. I got to have the big ones, elephant size. And I, my little toe, <laughs> caught the corner of them elephant scales. And I did not say, glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. jump, charm jump, bald running in the other room. I guess I scared them all, slammed to death. All I knew was my toe hurt because I was too proud to do what? Flip a switch and walk around. You say, that's awful petty. But you know what? It's the little things in life that will hurt you the worst if you don't watch what you're doing. The preacher knows what he's talking about. I've got a swollen toe to prove it. No, I'm not going to show it to you after church. Forget that. There are no battles that we cannot win. There are no walls that are too tall for us to scale. Superman has nothing on the Christian who's got God with him. Say amen. amen. Oh, listen to me. As clear as the difference is between night and day, so is the difference in the life of a dependent believer and the independence of haughty men. There should be a difference between us and the rest of the world. We should be humble, trusting God, never promoting or pushing ourselves. Never depending on ourselves because you can't depend on you. I thought I was smart. I thought I knew what I was doing. I didn't know nothing of the sort. I guarantee you now, every time I go through that office, I'll cut that light on. My little toe will remind me every time. Lastly, there's truthfulness. 2 Samuel 25, 22, as for God, his way is what? And the word of God is tried in the buckler to all them who trust him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? There are no lies in the truth. There are no deceptions in the truth. There are no delusions in the truth. There's no deceit in the truth. There's no counterfeit in the truth. There's no hoax in the truth. The truth stands on its own. Say amen. It's pure. The word buckler in the Hebrew term, Malgain, is a protector. Also, the scaly hide of a crocodile. You ever tried to stab a crocodile? 
You won't do it real easy. Why? Because that skin is tough. That's why people want crocodile shoes. They last forever. And crocodile belts. Now, I could probably wear that, but don't you give me no snake skin. Mm -mm. But that crocodile hide is tough. It's armed. It's a buckler. It's a defense. You ever seen two alligators fight each other? Give teeth that long. But you know what? It don't, it don't work on themselves because they got tough hide. They got tough hide. Their hide is their protector. The truth is our protector. It's our buckler. It's our safety. It's our protection. We can depend on Almighty God and His unwavering and stable truth. Live by the truth. This is why America is going to hell in a handbag because they're calling us liars because they don't believe the Bible. They're calling us bigots because we believe the Bible. They're calling us gimps because we lean on the Bible. Well, if I'm a gimp, let me lean on. Say amen. Let me lean on because it's truth. It's my protection. All you have to do is trust him enough to obey his word by the faith. And the faith will sustain you every day of your life. He is our unmovable rock a strong and stable foundation to stand on. You see, the rest of the world can laugh at us, condemn us, and brag on themselves, and lie to everybody. And they can call us the liars and the fools and the gimps. Just keep standing on that rock. You'll be safe. You'll be safe from the storm. And when the trumpet sounds, the rock will take you home. And you won't go through the tribulation. You won't go to hell for all eternity. But while you're thankful for your rock, don't forget there's plenty of rock room left on the rock to get others on board. And that's why we're here. We're not here to put people down and make them look bad. We're just here to stand for the truth so they can see the light, so they can come to the light and protect themselves from death, hell, and the grave through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed. History repeating itself. The haughty pride on parade. We need to stand for righteousness. We need to embrace cleanness. We need to embrace God's fairness and trust Him. Haughtiness should not be in our life. Darkness is our enemy, but the light is our friend. And there's no darkness in Christ at all. Truthfulness is our buckler. It's our rock that we stand on. It is our safety zone. And again, there's plenty of room left. If you need to get others to join us on that rock, they're lost, they can be saved. If they're headed to danger, they can be recovered. If they'll just come to Christ. Is there one this morning say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. I won't come to you. I won't embarrass you. I just won't pray for you. Is there one who will raise their hand this morning and say, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you pray for me? Slip your hand up real high. Preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved, but I'm concerned about it. Anyone that way this morning? How many here this morning say, Preacher, I got loved ones and friends and neighbors that are lost, and I want to be as humble as I can be and as reflective of the light of God as I can be. I want to stand on the truth and share it with others. I want my friends, my neighbors, and my family to be saved. Preacher, God spoke to me this morning. Pray for my lost loved ones and help me be the light to them I need to be. Slip your hand up real high and let God know you heard him. God bless you all over the room. How many here this morning say, Pastor, i got to be honest. I sometimes think I'm smarter than God. I deny his truth and live my way. But I'm beginning to see, Preacher, it's not working. My way is just not working, Preacher. And I understand what you're saying today. Preacher, would you pray for me that I'll come closer to Christ? I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. I'm just not living for him like I should. Preacher, pray for me that I'll draw closer to him and live closer to his truth and walk in his light. So not only can I be blessed, but my friends too can be saved. and My family can be saved. My neighbors can be saved. And I'll be a testimony and a light that people might see Jesus in me instead of seeing me. How many raise your hand this morning and say, Preacher, pray for me. I need to give her some haughtiness. God bless you. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. God bless you. God speak. Yes, ma'am. 
I got some haughtiness I need to deal with. God bless you. Is there another before we pray? Father, take this invitation. Speak to every heart. Touch every life. Lord, help us all. We've all got haughtiness we need to deal with. And Lord, if we'll deal with it, you'll help us be the Christians we ought to be. Help us leave here trusting you and in faith. Help us leave here spreading your light and souls being saved because of our humility and our trust in the one who's the most humble of all, the Son of God. Take this invitation. Speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. The altars are open. If you need to come while they play this song, be obedient to God. Listen to his word right now as we start this song of invitation. Let God speak to your heart and soul. Come on. If God spoke to you, come to this altar. That's right. Come. Neil said stand. Whatever you need to do, come on. God speak. He loves you. We got to love you.
Lord, I just pray you just take what we heard, Lord, and just help us to uh, go out and share it with the world, Lord. Help us just to be the light in, uh, in this world, Lord, and just help us to uplift everything for you and your glory and your honor, Lord. Lord, I pray you just be with us all here, Lord. Help us to come back tonight. Be your hands of glory as they perform. And Lord, I just pray that souls are saved and lives are changed. We just love you and thank you for all you do. For it's in Jesus' name.